this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this stemless red, or I'm sorry, white wine glass with this beautiful red and black rose pattern. Just see how pretty it is. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a three-quarter flat flat brush. It's a one-stroke brush and a number 12 flat brush, another one-stroke brush. And I will be using vintage white, engine red, happy green, and thicket. These are all folk art paints and they all are the multi-surface paints. Alright, let's get started with the actual large rose that is at the front of the glass or wherever you want to consider it to be. But I'm looking at it as possibly being at the, the front of the glass. And it's a pretty good size rose. It takes up basically the front of the glass. So I'm just going to do my simple wiggle stroke. And then just continue on going around it. Now I should be allowing a little bit more distance from the, the brim of the glass to for the lips to not touch the paint, but for this one I'm just kind of going out of, I mean there's still a little bit of space, but it'll be fine. All right. I'm just painting my typical rose, not doing anything really different. My standard rose pattern that I paint and paint and paint. Actually, I probably need to do a, a video on different roses to paint. This seems to be my signature rose. Like I said, I'm with the, the black and the red. It's a pretty combination. I did a tutorial not too long ago doing a black rose or red rose using the black as the contrasting color. And there's not a lot of, I'm going to say, as far as the contrast between the two, it'd be a little hard to tell. And I still think it's pretty, pretty con, a pretty design. I'm just doing that around there. It's very easy, very simple rose. And this is just my, my signature rose that I do on my hangers and do a lot of my glassware. Alright, so then I'm going to do, the biggest problem is trying to keep the block from not overpowering. Just do like a, a bud. And I decided to stick with this larger brush for this part of it. And then eventually I will, I will turn it in, or use the number 12. I'm going to have two buds over here. Just keeping it simple. Like I said, you don't, it doesn't have to be real extravagant to be pretty. It truly does not. Alright, then I'm going to go to my smaller brush, the number 12, and do a smaller rose on the back side using the black and the red still. Again, I just have such difficulties keeping my fingers out of these patterns when I'm doing the stemless. The ones with stems are definitely a lot easier for me. 
to hold on to and paint at the same time. Again, you can tell that there's a lot of black in this. So I'm trying to make sure I get some red in there. And just keep keep doing the design all the way around. It's nice when you can do this with glass because it's so easy to turn while you're painting. Again, I apologize with the contrast being there's not a lot of contrast. Makes it a little harder to see what I'm doing here. I'm hoping that you can see it enough to tell what it is I'm doing. I do keep wiping off the black a little here. My little swishes. I'm dipping into the red, really not the black. go. Alright, so I'm going to rinse this one off because my next step will be to add the greenery in using the happy green and the thicket. Oops. And I do the wrong thing, which is awesome. Okay, well, hold on here for a second. I'll make sure I have it going right here. All right, and I'm just going to take my brush, just kind of run it down the side of the little rosebud. And it's still wet, so I'm doing uh, wet on wet. So as you can see, it'll kind of take the paint off a little bit. So you could hit this with a hair dryer and then continue on. If you don't want it removing any of your paint or mixing in any of your paint. I'm going to go up the opposite direction this time. Do that over this one too. I mean if it removes any of your paint, just go over it. It's not a big deal. Truly is not. It's not a big deal. Doing the same thing here. Doesn't have to be perfect by any means. I did get some red in there. Easy design. All right. So then I am going to come back in. Well, I keep doing that. Back this off a little bit. Come back in here with the thicket and the happy green. Make sure I'm doing the right one here. And then we'll go back this way, and I'm going to do. Just these little leaves that'll come up like that. Little leaves. And you can make them like they have little veins in them or stems. I'm not going to really worry about that too much with this design. And do it over here. And they can definitely go over the top of each other, it's fine. And then do the same thing here, go like that, and the same thing down. It's going to go over the rose a little bit. That's fine, not a problem. I'm sure I'm showing it to you. 
I turn this a little bit here so you can see it and then just repeat the same thing over here if you want them to be look different that's fine you can you know do it differently not to do them both the same like what I'm doing just a, like I said a very easy design keep it simple for newbies and if you get a little red in it that's fine if you don't like it then make sure that you do some drying time before you paint because you will get you will pull color from the, paint, the other part of the painted design just saying it's going to happen you don't like it then make sure you either allow some drying time or you hit it with a hair dryer or a heat gun and you just keep wiggling it down now if for some reason you don't like the way it looks or it's not opaque enough because I like to make mine look opaque as much as possible then just go over it. It's okay. And we're just going to go down the center. And then I'm going to try to brush some of this. And then I'm going to turn this one. I'll go like that. Turn it down the side, and again on this you can do you know, different styles of leaves. This is my go-to, and you'll see that on all my videos pretty much. I love the wiggle leaves, so I tend to do those the most. And I'm trying very hard not to get my fingers in the wet paint. And on these, I am going to just keep the color the same from the on both the outside and the inside. I'm not going to do any variations here, but if you choose to, that's fine. If you watch my other videos and and I do different leaves, then that's that's fine. I'm trying to get this to be opaque looking. Hold on here. And then I'm going to do, try to do just a smaller one up this direction. Actually, I could do it right in here. And it can go over, again, go over the rose itself. Even hit into some of the, the buds or whatnot that are underneath here. But it doesn't have to. I'm just kind of lightly trying to get it painted there. Alright, I'm trying to think, did I do any? I did do a little bit of this around the bigger blossom, but I'm going to just stick maybe a little one down here. But not both of them are not going to be the same. Not, design will be similar but not identical. And as I've mentioned in the past, you need to make sure if you're doing hand painted glassware that you have somewhere on your site that no two will be alike because you will be surprised at how many people think that they should be identical. Hey, it's hand painting. They're not going to be identical. It's just not going to happen. Alright, so there we have it. Again, they're, they're not going to be the same. It's a very similar pattern on both, but not identical. Now once you're done with these, with the folk art paint, you allow it to dry for one hour and then you place it in a cold oven turn the oven on put your glass or put your glassware in first then turn the oven on and then 
I add my preheat time to my bake time. Bake time with this paint is 30 minutes, so my preheat time is about 20 minutes. So I have it in there a total of 50 minutes with the oven on. Once it's done baking, turn it off, allow the glassware, the inside of the oven to cool completely, and then remove the glassware. Once you've painted it, if you want to add something to it to help with the durability, feel free to do so. That a product that I typically like to use just to add some durability to it is the Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe Gloss. But I do wait till it's been baked and cooled before I add that on. Alright, if you're new to my channel, make sure my video with all of your friends and family through your social network, which there is a button at the bottom for you to do that. And I think if I forget anything else, give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. And until the next one, you have a good one.